a Peloton bike was a must-have accessory for the COVID lockdowns, allowing people to exercise when not allowed to leave their homes as governments attempted to stop the spread of COVID-19 around the world. From a single wobbly prototype bike, Peloton has developed into a global community urged on by inspirational instructors, which many have referred to as the Church of Peloton. Led by one of the five co-founders, John Foley, the company's value peaked at $50 billion in late 2020 as the global pandemic caused lockdowns around the world. Since that time, the company has had to issue recalls for products and lay off three in every 10 employees. Let's take a look at where it all went wrong. The story of Peloton starts with John Foley, who paid his way through college by working shifts at a Mars sweet factory and at the age of only 22, oversaw North American manufacturing of Skittles and Starburst. In the 1990s, he joined CitySearch.com and then moved to IAC to run invitations website evite.com. Foley was used to running other people's businesses, but at the age of 40, he told National Public Radio he wanted to be big. After Foley and his wife became hooked on boutique fitness classes that were taken in the United States by storm, the idea for Peloton was born. The fitness classes at physical locations would sell out in minutes, and Foley thought the classes could be beamed straight into people's homes onto a massive TV screen attached to a bike. Just like gaming computers had killed arcades, he felt gyms and studios wouldn't be able to compete. Foley initially wanted to stream SoulCycle and Flywheel classes, but neither of the companies were interested. Nor were the 400 institutional investors who Foley pitched to in the space of three years. In the end, Kickstarter saved the day in 2013, but even still, only 178 people backed the project, most of whom were friends. When the company needed an additional £10 million to produce the first bike, it took thousands of pitches to angel investors. However, once people could experience Foley's vision in an upscale New Jersey mall, customers queued up to purchase bikes priced at £2,245 each. By late 2019, the company had sold more than half a million bikes, made a billion dollars in revenue, and was valued at $8.2 billion. Wall Street was lapping up Foley's vision for the company to join the illustrious club of companies valued at $1 trillion. Peloton had ridden the early supply chain issues that had plagued other companies, and was the second best performing stock in the Nasdaq, as subscriber numbers doubled to 1.7 million, and sign-ups for its cheaper digital pass 10 x in the early weeks of the pandemic. Peloton was still loss-making, but the Christmas advert showing a woman pedalling hard on her bike to please her husband saw a billion dollars immediately wiped off the company's value. Social media users likened it to the woman looking like a hostage and trying to please her husband. Companies often make mistakes, but this one was in front of everyone on a global stage. Thankfully, as the pandemic took hold, doubters were silenced as lockdowns saw sales triple with customers using the bikes twice as much as before the pandemic. Peloton's first problem was keeping up with demand, but the next was keeping the high levels of growth going. Since global lockdowns have eased, Peloton have struggled to maintain growth and spent almost a third of revenue on sales and marketing in the fourth quarter of 2021. And while revenues have increased significantly, losses have also ballooned from $191 million in 2019 to $1.1 billion in 2021. The company was growing too quickly, with Foley pushing on to build his vision of a Netflix-style media company, spending $100 million on studios in New York and London, and $400 million on a factory in Ohio to reduce the reliance on imports from Taiwan. Recruitment also increased at an alarming rate, with the workforce going from less than 2,000 to 8,600 in a little over two years. Peloton was trying to go mass market, producing content for all consumers, when in truth they were a niche company who had a core client base. By early 2021, customers were waiting four months for deliveries and shifts were often cancelled for delivery drivers due to a lack of stock. In February, Foley said the company would spend $100 million on air freight to overcome shipping delays and in May, recalled Peloton's $4,300 treadmills after they were responsible for the death of a child. Even prior to the COVID supply chain issues, Peloton would replace bikes even with the slightest scratch or if the seat did not fit correctly. 
These damaged bikes were often scrapped if a simple fix was not possible, and warehouses often had little space to store them. Management viewed such waste as acceptable, considering the growth in revenue. Peloton prioritised perfection and never sent out refurbished bikes to customers. However, as demand began to deteriorate, so did the perfection of the brand's bikes, with many orders arriving from Taiwan with corroding frames. Instead of throwing out the damaged bikes like they had previously, they were all fixed. However, some were sent to customers which employees knew were rusting on the inside. The solution from senior management was again to throw money at the problem and send hundreds of gallons of rust sealant to warehouses. The problem was that much of this sealant sat around as so little was actually needed to fix the rust issues. Peloton blamed the issues on abnormal oxidation, but stressed that it did not affect quality, durability or reliability and promised to replace any bikes that had problems. Wall Street also started to turn against Peloton as earnings fell short of expectations in 2021 as subscriber growth slowed. By November, Peloton cut its full year sales outlook by over a billion dollars. Despite this, Foley told analysts how excited he was about the future and the stock crashed 40%. The fall affected Peloton's executives hard, with one seeing their net worth fall from around $35 million to seven. More issues lay around the corner for Foley as he promised not to raise any more money. But only 12 days later, the company placed $1.1 billion worth of stock on the market, diluting current shareholders. Investors began to feel betrayed and plotted to oust Foley as CEO. More negative press left Foley fighting other fires as Mr. Big died of a heart attack in the reboot of Sex in the City whilst riding a Peloton bike. Peloton later released an advert starring the same actor a few days later but it was pulled after he was accused of sexual assault by a number of women. After pulling the ad, Peloton lost another $1.8 billion in value. A further fall occurred after leaks suggested it was halting production due to slow demand. Foley denied these claims, but admitted that redundancies were possible. While investors plotted to oust Foley, they faced a number of issues, as he and several other executives owned the super voting shares that controlled the company. Foley's position was safe despite all the issues that had occurred. Jason Antarby, one of these investors, publicly called for Peloton's board to fire Foley and put the company up for sale. Little did he know that headhunters had already started looking for Foley's successor. The news revealed in early January was a further blow to investors as SEC filings show that as Peloton share price had surged past $80, insiders and senior executives began to sell shares which amounted to nearly $500 million. Most of these sales occurred at $110 a share. The question of whether these sales were well-timed or not is another matter, but they shielded themselves from a significant fall in value. On the 8th of February, Barry McCarthy, the former Netflix and Spotify CFO, who is a four-decade veteran of the tech industry, was unveiled as the new CEO, slashing sales forecasts even further, acting the Ohio plant and announcing cuts of over $800 million. Foley remained as executive chair and will act purely as a visionary. While he spent significant sums of money and made a number of bad decisions, Foley can still help the company going forward. They still boast 2.7 million subscribers who pay $40 a month, but the service and products Peloton produce are not mainstream like Foley's vision. These subscribers will still provide cash flows to fund future opportunities and hopefully get the company back on its feet. Within a few weeks of his leadership, McCarthy was fending off potential bids from Nike and Amazon, who spotted a bargain after the share price collapsed 85% in a year. Senior management stressed that they want to keep the company independent, and Peloton is now following a new model, focused on new content, countries and products, with images of rowing machines and strength devices appearing online. How these products fare, and how McCarthy's plans play out, will define if Peloton is remembered as a comeback tale. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and check out these other videos.